What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of All Mouth Bassing. Today I'm actually out at Valco Ponds, which is a place I rarely fish in Pueblo, Colorado. A lot of the waters I fish are in Pueblo because that's where I live. So there's actually some pretty great fisheries here and that's where I spend most of my time fishing. But Valco Ponds during the summertime is one of my least favorite places to go because it tends to be overcrowded and people tend to be completely disrespectful of regulations here if they even know them and it's just it's a place i'm not crazy about when it's overcrowded in the summertime during the fall and during the springtime before people really come out i don't mind it then because it's not really too terrible but a lot of the times it kind of sucks this time of year but we're out at pond five which is a little more secluded a lot of people don't really bother with it. It seems like most people go to ponds one through three. The regulations there are a little less strict for the people who do follow the regulations. And so I think that's one of the reasons it gets a little less traffic. And it's also more well known because there was a parking lot there for a lot longer and now there's two parking lots. So it's much more accessible now to get to ponds four and five. But I think a lot of people still don't really realize that. So. Ponds one through three, they just, they get a lot of activity during this time of year. And that's one of the reasons I'm not crazy about them because they're not really big enough to handle all that pressure, in my opinion. I'd rather go hand, um, go fish the bigger ponds or the ponds that get slightly less pressure. So that's where I'm at on that. But enough of all that because what we're doing today at Pond 5, because we are here, is trying to get after, hopefully first, some kind of bluegill or sunny and then cut bait that up for a big cat hopefully i know there's some nice catfish in here and there should be an okay population from what i understand there's also bass in here so i'll probably throw one line out for cats and then fish around for some bass i got scooby with me not really exactly sure of his plan i just know he's out here fishing with me i think he's after some catfish and uh yeah that's pretty much the plan. I might actually do a food chain challenge depending on how it goes. I think I'm gonna try to catch like a cricket or a grasshopper or something, give a food chain challenge a go. But uh, if I can't get a bite on one of those things for a cut bait fish, then I'll probably give up and throw some worms. So that's the general plan. Kind of a little bit sloppy, not exactly sure what I'm doing, but I'm gonna try to get on some bass and cats. So I'm gonna get after it and see if we can make it happen. All right, guys, I'm going to attempt to find some kind of live bait now. I would imagine there should be some kind of crickets or grasshoppers or something. It's a dragonfly there, but that's way too big. Man, I feel like half the time I walk through these tall grass, this tall grass, in. I can't get away from the grasshoppers and crickets. Of course, when I want one, here's one. All right, guys, I got a pretty good sized little grasshopper here. Gonna throw this guy on a hook and see if I could get some kind of sunny or blue go with it. All right, guys, I can't say I've ever rigged a grasshopper on a hook before. So this is kind of a first, didn't really know how to go about it. So I just kind of put it through the side of it. Um, it's on there at least. And it's on a 30 second ounce jig head. I know that's gonna make it sink. It would probably be it would probably be better to let it sit on the top, but I already had this jig head on. So I'm gonna try it with this. And if it doesn't work out, I may decide to switch it up and try a weightless hook. I'm gonna stick to this method for now. Okay. 
All right, got one. Hell yeah. All right, guys. Step one of the food chain challenge is complete. Well, I guess step two. I already got the grasshopper. And now I got the sunfish. All right, guys, time to turn this dude into cut bait. All right, ready to put on a hook. All right, guys, Scoop says he's gonna stay over on this side. I think I'm gonna go over where all this down timber is and see if I could get a cat over there. But if one of us has better luck than the other, I'm sure we'll probably end up meeting up somewhere here. Oh look, there's a deer right in front of me. I saw it earlier, Scoob pointed it out, but I didn't think it was right in front of me. <laughs> That's neat. All right guys, the only way I've ever really fished this lake before is just like throwing a few casts here and there on my way over to ponds one through three. So I really don't know what to expect and I'm not sure how this spot right here is gonna perform, but I've got this just about perfect size piece of cut bait on. I chopped up a little sunny I caught and there's actually a pretty nice bass in front of me, but uh, I'm gonna chuck this out there and hopefully get on a cat bite. If it takes me a while and I don't end up on a bite, I may end up switching spots. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, since I still have my grasshopper, I figure I might as well toss this out a couple more times and see if I could get one or two extra, um, one or two extra sunnies or gills for cut bait. There's actually a decent bass out there. I wonder if that'll take this. That'd be wild. There we go. That's a good sign. Oh no, come on, bro. Yes, yes. Perfect size bait fish. I could throw that live, it'll be perfect. That's awesome. Might try catching one more grasshopper and see if I could get one or two more of this. Not sure where I'm gonna get a grasshopper. I think they like this weird crap. Yeah, they do. There's a bunch right here. They're everywhere. I gotta. I need the right one. Can't just be any old grasshopper. Oh man, these are like thorny though. Ow, no wonder why they're in here, they're smart. They know predators aren't gonna come in here after them. Jeez. Oh man, that's a good one, that's a good one, that's a good one. Oh, you bastard, he got back in that crap. I need to isolate one and get it out of this weedy crap. And this is harder than you might think. Yes, I got one. That one took a little more work than the first one, but I got it. <laughs> All right, guys, got them hooked up. Let's try to get one or two more gills. I got a little bass. Not what I was after, but I'll take it. All right, guys, that's technically a complete food chain challenge since bass are a um, game fish. You can't really use them for bait, so this is kind of technically the top of the food chain as far as angling goes. But I did skip a step because I didn't get them with a bluegill or sunny, but I got them with the little cricket or grasshopper I caught. So that's pretty cool. Not quite what I was going for. I was trying to go cricket slash grasshopper, bluegill slash sunny uh, catfish, but I'll take a little bass. This isn't really the best spot for a release, but I'm gonna give it a go. All right, there you go. Swimming right off. Awesome. Time to try and find another grasshopper. Oh, snap. Here we go, here we go. Yes, that was the easiest. That was easier than the first one. I literally walked up right after I said time to find one. I found one.
Got another one hooked up. Gonna toss it out there and see if I can get some more bait. Seems like the bass like this all right too though. And I saw a couple nice ones out there, so who knows? Maybe I could get on a bass. Not that that's really what I'm going for, but I won't complain too much. All right, I gotta, oh, what? That bluegill straight up snatched that grasshopper. I guess I gotta get another one. All right, I see I see a couple here. Oh man, that's a decent one, come on. Don't do that, it's too lively. Got him, oh, I had him, where'd he go? Man, oh, I think I got a cat bite. Definitely just had a big cat bite, but it let go. Man. Something just smoked that cut bait. Ooh, there's a grasshopper right in front of me though. That's cool. Even if I didn't get a cat, it made me run over here and I found a grasshopper right near my cat line. So that's nice. All right, guys. Let's throw this hopper out there. This one's real lively. Let's throw this out there and see if we can get another piece of live bait. All right, got a big bluegill with it. It's about the right size for cut bait at least. Ooh, sorry bud. It'll be a big piece, but it'll work. In the meantime, I think I will try to get one more grasshopper and try to get at least one more sunny with it or bluegill because that last bluegill I got was a little bigger than I'd prefer to throw for bait. Here's a hopper right here. Let's see, Let's see what I can do about it. All right, he's on the ground. Ouch. Well, forget about that one, I guess. You got one? Ah, Scoob just lost one, I guess. Huh? You got a bass? Nice. On cut bait? On live bait? Nice. Cool. Scoob just got a bass on his live bait. All right, where's these grasshoppers at? I think they figured out my, I think they figured out my shenanigans. Oh sh this guy didn't know. Perfect size too. These things are tough to hold on to, man. <laughs> All right guys, I got this other grasshopper here. Gonna get it out there and Hopefully get a more appropriately sized bait fish than that last bluegill. Like I said, it was a bit bigger than what I would have hoped for. Oops. They got, oh, never mind, it's just a small one. I thought they got my grasshopper, but they didn't. Oh, I just had a bass eat it and I missed. What the heck, man, what a bummer. Let's see if I can get that bass back. I mean, it wasn't big or anything, but still, like a one pounder. Would've been cool to catch it. All right, let's quit playing around and trying to get a bass. Let's get get one of these bait fish so I could actually start bass fishing. Yes, is that a better size one? That's a perfect size bluegill. Just a little smaller than that first one. That's what we need. Cool. Yeah, see this bluegill is just a little bigger than what I'd prefer to throw for bait, so I'm going to toss this guy back. Maybe the smallest... Oh! Just got a hit. Man. Eh. Something grabbed it. Pretty sure it let go though. Whole lot of weeds in here, man. <laughs> All 
That was the second bite in like, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes probably. God. Scooby just caught a decent little cat. So it's over 20 inches probably. Looked about it, he held it up. It's a pretty good fish. It's just, he's way over on the other side of the pond where I'd go show it to you guys. <laughs> All right guys, now that I've got what I believe should be enough bait, I'm going to go ahead and throw around for some bass. I'm going to try throwing this weightless a couple times. I don't know how far it's going to cast. Eh. Hell yeah. Nice. Hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. Scoob just caught his biggest bass of the year. He's way over on the other side of the lake, though. I threw a weight on the little crawfish rig I showed you guys a minute ago that I tried throwing weightless. Now I've got an eighth ounce weight on it. So I'm gonna send this out a few times and see if I can get any bass. All right guys, there's a decent little bass right in front of me. Some straight up slab bass out there. It's crazy, but I actually had more interest from these bass on that little, on that little rig I was throwing for the bluegills than I've had with an actual Texas rig set up for bass with a crawl trailer. Piece of garbage. Oh my God. I'm irritated right now. <laughs> All right guys, there's so many weeds and crap in this pond and the bass just really don't seem to be too interested in artificial baits. These are like tournament ponds and people really uh, throw a lot of artificials, a lot of soft plastics get thrown here, I believe. So it makes quite a bit of sense that they weren't too interested. But uh, I was ended up getting more frustrated than anything, just getting snagged up on the bottom with that Texas rig. I don't really feel like throwing anything suspended. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to find some other kind of bug that I could turn into bait. I kind of want to try something other than the grasshopper if I could find something. Well guys, finding some other kind of bug that I figured I could catch and wouldn't be able to bite me or hurt me, it's kind of proving a little more difficult than I expected. Well, I mean, and it's big enough to put on a hook. There's ants everywhere, but can't really do too much with that. Yes, I got a big one. Big and green, nice and colorful. Awesome. All right guys, I got this big old grasshopper rigged up. Let's chuck it around and see if we can get some bait. Oh, it got my freaking bait. Ah, oh, that grasshopper took me forever to find. That pisses me off. All right, guys, I guess I'm trying to find a grasshopper again. All right, guys, just found a Mondo. Of course, it just jumped out of my hands before I even got back to my freaking stuff. Oh, this is annoying. All right, I'm hanging on to this one. It's not going anywhere. All right, guys, I got another hopper rigged up. There's a, there's some bluegill out here, but a lot of them are bigger than what I want. Man, they freaking ate it again. This is annoying. 
All right, guys, I knew I wasn't gonna get a bite anyway. Scoob had a decent fish on, so I figured I might as well come over here and check it out. Decent, probably a good 20 inch catfish. Not bad at all. Oh yeah, dude, good catch. All right, guys, I decided to come over basically right on top of where Scoob's fishing because he's having a ton of luck and he's throwing live bait. So I'm just gonna try to do exactly what he's doing and see how it works out. So, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a second live bait out. Another little sunny. Hopefully this one does better than the last one. Hopefully I have a little better luck now. Let's find out. I'm trying to be optimistic. All right guys, Scoob just took off and he was crushing it in this spot over here just a little to the right of where I just was. I don't know what the deal is. I think it's all the hydrilla, but the live baits I'm throwing keep dying out there for some reason. And like I said, I think it's all the hydrilla. I think they're getting like wedged down in there and kind of suffocating. So I decided to rig up some cut bait. This is just a piece of bluegill and Scoop said he was having luck on the head. So I'm gonna throw a head. I typically throw tails, but Scooby was having a lot of luck today, so I'm gonna try to listen to it as advice and see how that goes for me. All right, we're rigged back up. Let's see if anything happens out here. All right, I'm definitely getting a bite though. All right, guys, I'm getting on a bite here. I don't know what it is, but something's biting. Am I on a fish? I think I'm on a fish. Nice. Let's go. I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, it's gonna be big. Ah, uh, maybe. Oh, giant bass, impossible PB scoop. Let's go. Holy crap, today is turning around. Oh, buddy. Big, big old bass. Oh, man. It's a big fish. I told you, bud. I shouldn't have powered it in the way I did, but I did, so it works. <laughs> On a head, just like you said, bud. I even said, I was like, Scoop told me to use a head. Man, this is a big bass. The fight wasn't even crazy, though, because, oh, my gosh. Whew. The fight wasn't even that crazy, though, because... I freaking just, <laughs> I manhandled it in. But wow, Scoob, this thing's a mondo. I'm gonna hang up on you, okay, bud? All right, guys, I'm not gonna weigh this fish because I don't feel like messing with it and you're supposed to technically put these fish back right away. So I'm just gonna take one or two pictures and get it back in the water. But holy crap, this is a freaking nice bass. Definitely not far off from a PB, possible PB. This thing's a beast. All right, guys, I took a couple real quick pictures. Now let's get this beautiful bass back in the water. Whew, thing was awesome. Fight wasn't too crazy because I was on that heavier rod, but this is a beast of a bass. And uh, that actually didn't go how I was expecting. I was expecting a catfish, but we got the old, uh, we got the old food chain challenge done. Hell yeah, guys. Let's get this bass back in the water. Awesome. There it goes. All right, guys, I'm not quite ready to pack it up yet, but I don't think I'm gonna use this bluegill anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and release it now. All right, guys, I think I'm just about done fishing and ready to pack it up for the day. So, so far, I mean, it's actually been a pretty awesome day. It started out a little rocky. As you guys saw in the intro, I came out here with kind of low expectations or not really knowing what to expect. I don't come out here often in the summertime and it's definitely not my favorite spot to fish in the summer. So I came out with a sort of negative attitude and I'll admit that. And I think that has an effect on things. I honestly do because towards the end of the day, 
I was talking to Scoob and my attitude improved and I just got in a better mood and after that things just started going 10 times better and I mean that's that's really the way it tends to be for me so I, I really think there's something to that guys I think just keeping a positive attitude can really mean everything I mean at the very least it can make things seem like they're going so much better if you're just trying to look at things with a positive light rather than focusing on all the crappy things because earlier I mean, I was having a tough time catching my grasshoppers for bait. My camera was having all kinds of technical difficulties. My batteries were dying. The camera was overheating. It was randomly having some technical or like graphical glitches and stuff. It was really strange, but I was having more trouble with my camera than I think I've ever had. I wasn't really catching anything and Scoob was over here crushing it. So I was getting a little discouraged and I was just letting things get me down and I shouldn't have been doing that because like I said, I just think things go better when you have a positive attitude and uh, I'm, I'm glad I turned things around. I'm glad I started getting in a better mood and I'm really glad I ended up getting on that big large mouth to top off the day and just really make things seem worth coming out here today. So, so far it's been awesome. Glad you guys stuck around to this point. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later. I guess I'm just gonna chalk today up to pretty much a fail but at least we ended up completing the challenge and getting on that largemouth bass yesterday. I didn't end up getting on a catfish, which was originally what I had in mind, what I figured I would end up on doing the food chain challenge. I mean, I'm totally fine with the fact that it ended up being a big old bass like that. Definitely fine with that. But I did want to get it done on a catfish too, so I'll probably do another food chain challenge at some point and actually target more specifically catfish with it. So. I definitely want to do that at some point, but I'm still happy with the, the way that this video did turn out. So anyway guys, if you do enjoy my content, please go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Uh, any kind of comments, engagement, any of that helps so much. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you out on the water and I'll see you on the next one.